Good morning and warmest welcomes to Trinity Episcopal Church on Galveston Island. I'm the Reverend Jimmy Abbott, the priest here at Trinity, and I'm so glad that you have joined us for our time of online worship and prayer. Unlike in the past where we have just live streamed our church services, we are doing these special online services so that I, since I'm new, can get to know you all better, all of you who are worshiping with us online. I'd encourage you to say hello in the comment section and in the chat box so that I can get to know you and that we can offer our prayers together though we are separated by distance and by our screens. If you're visiting with us for the first time, I'd encourage you to go to trinitygalv.org and while you're there, you can contact us so that we can get to know you better and that you can get involved in the life of our parish. You'll notice that today I'm recording our service from one of my favorite spots in Trinity Church, the balcony. It's a great place to take in the beauty and the, the space that we have. So I hope that you enjoy it also this morning. We'll begin with the psalm appointed for this Sunday, Psalm 146, found on page 803 in the Book of Common Prayer. Hallelujah! Praise the Lord, O my soul. I will praise the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praises to my God while I have my being. Put not your trust in rulers nor in any child of earth, for there is no help in them. When they breathe their last, they return to earth, and in that day their thoughts perish. Happy are they who have the God of Jacob for their help, whose hope is in the Lord their God, who made heaven and earth, the seas and all that is in them, who keeps his promise forever, who gives justice to those who are oppressed, and food to those who hunger. The Lord sets the prisoners free. The Lord opens the eyes of the blind. The Lord lifts up those who are bowed down. The Lord loves the righteous. The Lord cares for the stranger. He sustains the orphan and widow, but frustrates the way of the wicked. The Lord shall reign forever. Your God, O Zion, throughout all generations. Alleluia. Our gospel lesson appointed for this Sunday is taken from the seventh chapter of the gospel according to St. Mark. Jesus set out and went away to the region of Tyre. He entered a house and did not want anyone to know he was there. Yet he could not escape notice, but a woman whose little daughter had an unclean spirit immediately heard about him, and she came and bowed down at his feet. Now, the woman was a Gentile of Syrophoenician origin. She begged him to cast the demon out of her daughter. He said to her, let the children be fed first, for it is not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. But she answered him, Sir, even the dogs under the table eat the children's crumbs. Then he said to her, For saying that, you may go. The demon has left your daughter. So she went home and found the child lying on the bed, and the demon gone. Then he returned from the region of Tyre and went by way of Sidon towards the Sea of Galilee in the region of the Decapolis. They brought to him a deaf man who had an impediment in his speech, and they begged him to lay his hand on him. He took him aside in private, away from the crowd, and put his fingers into his ears, and he spat and touched his tongue. Then, looking up to heaven, he sighed and said to him, Hephatha, that is, be opened. And immediately his ears were opened, his tongue was released, and he spoke plainly. Then Jesus ordered them to tell no one, but the more he ordered them, the more zealously they proclaimed it. They were astounded beyond measure, saying, He has done everything well. He even makes the deaf to hear 
and the mute to speak. Here ends the lesson. Now, the Bible is full of things that we like to hear. Think of some of those verses, our favorite ones. Rejoice, ye pure in heart. Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden. Love your neighbor as yourself. We love these lines. We frame them on posters and put them in our homes. We post them on Facebook with rainbow backgrounds. We cross-stitch them onto pillows. All very well and good. But to me, this misses the whole sense of the Bible. As Marilyn Robinson once said, the Bible today is much thumped, but little pondered. See, we cut out these little bits that we like and mostly ignore the parts that are not appropriate for family audiences. Think about Elijah the prophet calling upon bears to eat children. Or there's David taking a woman by force. There's a young man running around on Maundy Thursday night without a stitch of clothes on. No one is putting the story of Judah and Tamar on an inspirational poster. If you don't know the story, look it up later. I can't tell you now. Children might be watching. So what do we do with these tough passages? What do we do with those bits of the Bible that we just don't like? What do we make of Jesus calling a woman a dog? Now, there are a few ways around it. We could explain it away. Oh, this was some later editor who put those words into Jesus' mouth. Jesus was too nice to say anything like that. We could conveniently skip over these passages, like we do with so many other verses in the Bible that make us uncomfortable. We could say that back then people were unrefined and that with today's enlightened thinking and modern morals, we know that that is now unacceptable. But I find all these explanations lacking. I find them all to be a way to say that we should dictate the terms of the Bible rather than letting the Bible speak to us. Now, I'm not saying that it's okay or good to call people of other ethnicities or genders dogs. Of course not. I find it vile. And never in a million years would I want this Bible verse cross-stitched on a throw pillow. But I think that we should open our minds and face the truth. The Bible ought to make us uncomfortable. The Bible is the story of God's covenant relationship with his people. So, of course, there are going to be some dark stories in there, as I know your family has its own dark stories. And yet somehow, especially in the last 150 years, the church has shied away from this truth. Now it seems that we go to the Bible for solace only and not for strength, for comfort only and not for challenge. That's why we want the little biblical aphorisms and the quotes that make us feel good. It's why we buy Thomas Kincaid paintings instead of crucifixes. We want comfort. And we reap what we sow. If we tell people that God is just there to hold your hand and pat you on the head to make you feel better then little wonder why fewer people come to church nowadays. It's just too easy. There's no there there. If we preach a vacuous faith, then we end up with insipid churches. We reap what we sow. There's a new term to describe this weakened version of Christianity. It's called moralistic therapeutic deism, moralistic. We think God wants us to be good and only good, but usually in our own way. Therapeutic, this whole thing is mostly to make us feel better. And deism, God is not really close, but somewhere far off. Moralistic, therapeutic deism. There's no challenge in this framework, only a mealy mouth fondness for a guy named Jesus who did some nice things a long time ago. 
It's all become about making us feel good. And look, if that's what this whole thing is about, if that's what Christianity is, count me out. I'd rather be at the golf course. And I'll be there if you need me. But chances are you won't actually need me because who would need the power of prayer and the power of sacrament if this was all about making us feel good about ourselves? It's this framework, this moralistic, therapeutic deism that does not know what to make of these challenging words from the Bible. It doesn't know what to make of Jesus' exchange with the Syrophoenician woman. It doesn't know what to make of the challenge of the cross. My own personal testimony, my witness of my life with Jesus is all about challenge. My relationship with Jesus has rarely been a comforting one. It has been a challenging relationship. I know that I am the dirty pot. And I feel Jesus scrubbing away at me every day. He's scrubbing away my pride, my self-centeredness, my dependence on me and me alone. More often than not, my relationship with Jesus is painful and difficult and exhausting. But that is what I have most admired about the saints in my life. Those examples of faithfulness that I adore. They have never gone to Jesus for comfort only, but for challenge. The Christians that I want to emulate have always taken the challenging path in their life, not the easy one. It's like some other uncomfortable Bible verse I've heard before. Something about picking up the cross and following Jesus. So back to the passage at hand, face the uncomfortable nature of this. Yes, Jesus is referring to the woman as a doll. Now remember, the Jews and Gentiles, the Syrophoenicians of the day, were not on friendly terms. That's putting it mildly. They had been fighting and killing each other for centuries. For Jesus to welcome her into the community of God, to welcome this woman who comes from a people who have waged war against the people of God, is dynamite. And that's the challenge for the day. Jesus welcomes into the community of God precisely those who had been opposed to the people of God. Where there had once been a dividing wall, there is now fellowship. Jesus is tearing down the barriers and uniting everyone in faith. It's tough, I know. But Jesus shows pity and empathy and love for a woman who had once been an enemy. Even us. Because when it comes down to it, I know that I am a dog. I'm a sinner. It's only by God's grace that I have been fed the crumbs. And that's been enough. And that's the best part. We get to comfort from God. But it's much better comfort than what we could come up with. The comfort The grace of the gospel is not about making us feel better. No, the grace is that Jesus is willing to welcome into eternal life anybody and everybody. Even a nameless woman from a foreign territory who's probably never been to a synagogue in her life. Even me, a desperate dog of a sinner. The challenge and the comfort or the same thing. So think about your life now. Wherever there is a challenge, wherever you are desperate, wherever you are crying out to God, that's where you should be looking out for God. Even if it feels as if you've been in the doghouse. The comfort and the challenge are both gifts from God. Indeed, this is the very heart of our faith. As our Lord Jesus Christ went not up to joy, but first he suffered pain and entered not into glory before he was crucified. Take the challenge. 
Don't go to the Bible. Don't go to God just to feel better about yourself. Go to the Bible. Go to God in prayer so that you may be challenged. And with that challenge comes the blessing of eternal life. Amen. As we continue our service with the prayers, I invite you to put your own prayers, thanksgivings, and intercessions into the chat box, into the comments, so that we who are all watching can be praying together and holding each other up in prayer. Our first prayer is the prayer, the collect for this Sunday. Grant us, O Lord, to trust in you with all our hearts. For as you always resist the proud who confide in their own strength, so you never forsake those who make their boast of your mercy. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And now we pray the words our Savior Christ has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And finally, a prayer for Labor Day, which we will be celebrating tomorrow. Almighty God, you have so linked our lives one with another that all we do affects, for good or ill, all other lives. So guide us in the work we do, that we may not do it for self alone, but for the common good. And as we seek a proper return for our own labor, make us mindful of the rightful aspirations of other workers and arouse our concern for those who are out of work. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Again, thank you so much for joining us for this online service. I, I hope that you've enjoyed it and that you've enjoyed the view of our wonderful church here at Trinity. There are a number of things going on in the life of our congregation. We are doing some meet and greet events so that I, as the new rector here, can get to know the congregation. Those, some of those will be online, some will be in person, some will be here at the church. If you'd like to find out more, you can visit trinitygalv.org and sign up for our online newsletter. We have our rally day coming up on Sunday, September 19th, and we will be hosting uh, an all-timers walk. We'll, we'll be hosting a team for the all-timers walk on Saturday, October 9th. Lots of ways for you to get involved here at Trinity Episcopal Church on Galveston Island. Again, thank you so much for joining us, and I will now conclude with a blessing. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen.